G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today's video is from 3FUL gear, the Taji 2 tent. Now I've had this on the shelf for over a year and I've eventually got around to have a look at it. The time of year here is the beginning, uh, no sorry, the end of January 2024. So, and I'm here in Western Australia. Now I've written down all the specs, all the stuff they say. I think it'll be easier to do this now, read, read through it and then go just over there and get the tent up, see how easy it is, show you the little bits that need to be done and, and we'll go from there and let you know how I think. So the 3FUL gear Taji 2, a hydrostatic head on it, the uh, waterproof is 5000mm which is a really really good one. Seam sealed with tape, uh, got 10 stakes, 4 guy line points, the zips are YKK zipper, the uh, buckles are Joraflex, uh, the actual coating is a silicon on the outside and a PU on the inside, hence the 5000mm. Uh, the outer fly is 15D nylon and it's the summer one if I remember I got. Actually, it might be the winter, but I think it's a summer one. The mesh is a 20D, and if you have the solid one for the winter, I believe that's a 15D nylon. Uh, the weight 1.8 kilograms that's the tent and the poles. And what is it? Yeah, with everything included, which is the pegs and a lot, they say it's 2.1 kilograms. Yep, so that's all the specs. What we'll do, we'll head over there and we'll get the ground sheet down. And I've thought of a way, because I've seen people put the ground sheet on this. They put the tent up, lift the tent on its side, then connect the ground sheet. Now, I have thought of a way that may work. So, I'll show you as I go. And if it doesn't, oh well, we tried. I forgot before when I go over there. The bag it comes in, it's not a normal stuff sack where you stuff it in from the end. It's a roll top. And we've got two compression straps with the drawer flex buckles on. We just press, take it undone. That rolls undone. So as you can see you've got plenty of room extra there. And it's a velcro which just connects there. And there's two straps holding all the tent together. In the bag. Now when I put this away I'm going to put it away with the ground sheet connected so that's going to make it a lot easier. So, yep yeah, the ground sheet's in here. Yeah, let's get to it. Let's have a quick look at the ground sheet. A decent little bag on it. Little draw cord with a line lock. Whether you keep it on, on or in the bag or not, makes very, very little difference, only a matter of a few grams. On each corner, you're going to see there's hooks, and that hooks onto a point of the actual uh, tent itself, the bathtub. Uh, it gets pulled and tied out. So hopefully the wind won't blow it away. Yeah, like the, the pegs or the X pegs. Yep, you got the notches on two. So the actual guys hold on to them. We've got the extra four guys in there. Let's put all that in the bag. In case of emergencies and you break one of your poles, you've got your pole repair kit which will see you through the night and get you home. And a patch. And that feels like it'll be for the actual ground sheet. Now the poles. Again, 
same as the pigs and the actual footprint they all come in their own individual uh, bags your cord and your line lots these are that have got the reflective in they're the same as your extra guy lines there the four guy lines I wouldn't say they're extra but this tent is a semi freestanding tent so you can get it so far before you uh, to choose which way you want and then peg the fire through the pegs out and the actual tent will hold itself up <coughs> The poles are aluminium. There should be three, if I remember right, two long, and then you spread a pole to go over the top. Drop it all down. Got the shock cord, hold it all together. And what you do have before we put the tent up is these attachment points. Now I ordered extra of these for another one of my tents. So I've got two points on the actual pole. And these are for your guy lines. So the guy, the guy lines don't attach to the fly of the tent, they attach to the poles and it's an exoskeleton. So the poles go on the outside, not the inside. So you'll be putting the fly and the inner up all at the same time. So in wet weather, this is going to be great. Uh, this is your spreader pole. It's just three pieces put together. I believe it's 7001 aluminium, so fairly, fairly strong. And these ends go into your grommets on either side of the actual uh, tent to open it up. And on the longer ones you've got these two which go into the grommets on each corner of the actual fly. So fairly straightforward and simple. But here you go, on the corner we have these rings. And that's where the inner is attached to the fly. And that's where we'll use the hooks and attach the ground sheet to it. So there we go, we were able to put the ground sheet on without putting the tent up and rolling it on its side. And now let's get the long poles in. Alright, we've got the grommets on each corner. It doesn't matter which pole goes to which corner, the two long ones are the same size. You go, that's the two poles in. And I'm going <coughs> to be honest, they do fall. Well, I thought I'd buy watching other people do it is this little centre hub, which I'll give you a close up of in a while. I'll put that up first. The poles clip into this, one on the side, and one on the top and now not holding itself up it's going to make it so much easier to do all the rest up now 
now doing all the first three up coming to the corners and leaving this feather pole until last leaving the spread of pollen until last it just makes it less to worry about less to handle and less to get hold of that makes it easier now this is a point where it hasn't been pegged out and just where they call it a semi freestanding so I'm over that way the camera shot so I'll pull it over the same as if I wanted to change pitch move it around turn it around so the wind wasn't blowing in a certain porch then I could move it now this just sits over the two poles I've seen people try and put it through here and have one of their main structural poles loose but the two long ones, the main structural posts, the poles which hold the actual corner points and give it the rigidity and this really here is only for pulling the sides out so you've got extra room inside when you're sitting inside so. and when you put it in your grommet on here and then just clip it once, you don't have to worry about holding it like you do with someone, you've got to hold it in place try and hold it to walk around the tent and then pull it down this one holds itself as long as it's in the grommet and it's clipped with one it's going nowhere so there it is basically it's up what we really need to do if we wanted to have the porches there is put two pegs in, one on either side. So we'll do that now. Now I'm not going to peg out all the four main corners because they're not staying the night in it but just for those four pegs in it's fairly stable it's not yeah it's nice and tight it's not really moving around it's got a bit of a window to probably hear Here's the end ones, just pull it out, allow a bit more ventilation and stability. On all four corners, you tension it up, you've got these buckles and 
and that's all it takes. Here's one coming out from the vestibule. There's two loops, one on each flap. The zip, as I said, is YKK. We've got one, two Valpro points. Now it's only a one-way zip, not a two-way zip. But the actual weather shield here is feels like I've got a bit of stiffening in it. So that's pretty good. That Valpro worked well. We've got the air vent with a stiffener in it. So that's going to hold it open. Now, people have said they have had water come through these points. And I believe what the UL gear are doing now <coughs> is seam sealing this in the factory. So that will prevent that. So if you're thinking of getting one from them, that should be done now. There's the other one at the end. And give it a little bit of a tug. Didn't need much. There's a vent from the diagonal corner to the other one. Yep. And that's how together with your hook and loop or velcro, whatever you want to call it. So what I might do, because I know this one was before they started seam sealing it, is I'll get some seam sealer. And I noticed when I did the lanchion, when I did it from the inside first, or the stitching on the outside, the seam sealer made its way through. So I'm going to do this first on the outside, but I'm not actually contemplating on using this over the winter because it's not really designed for windy weather and even though it's not so cold here in Western Australia we do get a lot of wind and quite strong wind walking down here today there's a few trees over where I parked my car they've closed most of that area off because trees are down, branches are down I think I had to climb over about five trees to get here and it's only 2.6 kilometers so, let's have a look on the inside oh before we do that Okay, this is your grommet so it comes through. And these are just the old fashioned clip on. Nice and simple. I said, even without pulling the four corners out, you can see how taut it is just with doing what I've done. And that's four pegs, vestibules, and either end for ventilation. Okay, what I want to show you. What I've seen, I've written other people who used it, I've liked the idea of. Instead of having a little toggle from the main vestibule flap, <laughs> they have a bungee, which was a spring around, and they've got a loop up here. And that's brought this door right out of the way. Now I've got the three season the mesh. This is the uh, 20D, no seal mesh. A double zipper, so you can open it from either way. Like I said, they're YKK zippers. And before I go inside, I think, yep, yeah, you can actually open this door all the way up. Take it up a peg. Bring it underneath. I always roll it underneath so if it does rain, it's the outside getting wet, not rolled up on the inside getting wet in there. So here it is down here. This one is the old toggle and loop. But slippery material. At least it's going to open up and you're going to get a lot more ventilation coming through. The bathtub, there is about 8 inches, average about 5, 6 inches getting pulled up there to about 8. And you can see where I've attached the ground sheet, so that, that will stay on now. 
Uh, all fairly decent stitching. Nothing to complain about. Like I said, I've seam seal all this on the inside, from the inside, so to say. And that's the only issue anybody's had is it came through here, I believe. So this is where the little loop is, the main bungee for the door. I think they could have put one on the actual other door there. It's had the two bungees, that would have been a lot better. And as you can see, there's only now three pegs holding it, and that's going nowhere. So here's your them buckles for tightening and loosening. Yeah, like I said, I haven't even got the four corners pulled out, and it's nice and taut. So let's go inside now. You see it, we've got a toggle and loop here. So I'll just roll the door up. I think this might have been better with a little bit of a bungee so it would have held it tighter. Oh, see, that's come undone. That's it, that's better. So let's hold that open, that's okay. Fairly big door to get in here. And it feels really spacious. Now, I am only five foot six-ish, uh, depending on what time of day and whose tape measure I'm using, give or take half an inch. This here is, I've got my hat on, so my head, it's a good about eight ten inches above me. I've seen a couple of people who are six foot two, six foot four, and they're sitting in here on the mat with like an inch and a half away from the top of the head to up here. So plenty of head space. And as you can see, sitting here on the edge, this is where the spreader bars come in. It's actually lifted all this section here that would normally come down out and in a way so we can actually sit right on the edge me personally about it touching my head touching so that, that's pretty good quality wise all the stitching is really nice we've got one small pocket in here probably big enough for a mobile phone and uh, my case with my glasses in let's go up We've got a hook up here to hang a lantern off. Reinforced corners there. And the seam of the floor goes along the side and it's tape seamed. So there's no join, no, no join in the middle, just along that side. Putting this tent up and the space in it, how easy it was and how roomy it feels. I wish I'd tried this tent and used it over last summer. That's just from first impressions. I will be getting it out this summer as soon as possible and I will be using it overnight. And I want to see how much ventilation it lets through. I know I can open these doors up, which I will do. But I'll also try it, rather honking it. I will also try it with the doors closed to see how much ventilation comes underneath and through the air vents. And like I said, if I try that, I've still got the option of opening the doors and letting the air flow. But yeah, I'm impressed with this so far. One little bit of cotton out the whole thing that hasn't been trimmed back. And that's it. I've, I'm uh, actually looking through one company's gear at the moment. And uh, each item I've looked at so far has had quite a few loose threads or they haven't been finished off well so for a company like this the, the range is not cheap but it's not expensive I'd say this tent's about in the mid range in price quality wise I'd say just initial looking at it I think the quality wise is probably mid range up to some of the lot more expensive tents 
I've reviewed some of the cheaper tents and a guy had the original of the uh, Chinese tent I was using and the quality of the Chinese tent which was a knockoff of the one that he was using felt and looked a lot better quality the only difference is his had a little bit of um, ground sheet a little bit extra which comes out here from to put his boots on and that was it and when he looked at the one I was using he said he preferred that one over the one that he was using which he paid I think six times the amount of money for so this on initial just with all the stitching the feel of it and the material of it the way the actual seams down the side there which was thought out well rather than a cutting it across here that going down the middle that that's a good idea that is I like that idea with that being over there that's some thought has gone into that yeah it's just it's nice I can feel the sun beating through going to be about 31 today and probably at about fills probably uh, 25 at the moment 26 but the sun is right on the top here now I can feel it but that breeze is coming through the door and going out under the vents there at the moment so that, that's a positive so if you enjoyed the video and you're not a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it and select all hit the thumbs up button the like button and if you are already a subscriber again I thank you very much